जनगण मन नायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा उत्तल गंगा हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उत्तल जल विदरंगा तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ responsibility of student good students friends whatever revolution that we have seen in the world from all the revolutions that have taken place in europe even prior to that in the asian subcontinent or as late as 2 to 3 centuries back in our own soil where a renaissance started taking place in bengal friends most of the changes in the society that took place were initiated by students or students who have just passed out and come out of their schools and colleges come out of the shackles and gone on to preach to the world that what to be done and what situation from childhood marriage ills of child marriage 
to widow remarriage, to cleaning of environment, to taking care of the elderly people, the social changes that took place in our society were all initiated by students. Friends, in our society also, if we look back from days of Chanakya to the days of Swami Vivekananda, the great and the revered souls, we see that all these developments that took place, all the changes in the society that took place were initiated by the students. And for us also, there has been no change in the modern day world. If we look at our Indian freedom struggle, it was those people who were just out of schools or colleges who had gone into the gallows. Look at Khudiram Bush. He was only 18 years of age. Maybe some of you are 18 plus here and now. Rather many of you are 18 plus. Just imagine a boy of 18 just out of school with so much of spirit and love for motherland kissing the rope that was there in the gallows and singing to the tune of Ekbar Bidai Dema Fireyashi he was only 18 years he was one amongst you one like you our freedom struggle is impregnated with stories like this stories of students who have done extraordinary well right from Bhagat Singh to Azad to everybody and the spirited generation the students who changed everything are actually celebrated all across the world if you look at the emergency that took place in our country one dark spot in our democracy in 1975 when the then Prime Minister declared emergency the voice of protest started I don't know whether many of you know the voice of protest started from a small hostel in Gujarat and the sparks that were created in Gujarat hostel fell you know, to the years of the hostels all across the country, primarily in Patna. Then from Gujarat to Bihar, those days people started taking up the voices against emergency and 19, 20 months down the line, emergency was abrogated, new laws were brought into the country and now you cannot have emergency in our country again for a second time in our so those decisions were taken by students. They built a nation. They kept one brick in the nation building. What is scariest in nation building as I come and talk to you? What is nation building? Nation building does not alone mean that building of roads, building of bridges, or building of any structure which will identify with your country. Nation building does not alone mean this. In our careers that used to be there in previous generation when we were still going to school, we were taught that the end all of life would be to become a doctor or an engineer or maybe a teacher. And there were no other options left. If we were not doctors or engineers or teachers, there was no option left for us. The next best option was to open a shop with our parents' money around a plot which was owned by your maybe your father and then start a career in business there. I'm not demeaning any one of this. But the concept of career has now changed. Especially in the last 30 years with internet coming to play a very important role of our life in our life. Can you imagine a career as a YouTuber? Can you imagine a career as a YouTuber? Can you ca imagine a career as a social influence? Now that is a career. So interestingly, if those are careers, what has gone into making those ideas into careers? 
And are these careers nation building ones? Or only doctors and engineers and teachers are nation builders? No, we need to look into this as a nation builder. Friends, as I come here and stand before you to talk on this subject called careers in nation building, many of you may, I, may ask, why is a member of parliament giving this lecture on career? I do not want to talk to you on the conventional way of, you know, building careers. Now, member of parliament in other words is actually a lawmaker. Someone who asks me, what are you doing? What is your full-time profession? Many of you know, as has been said at the start of this program, I happen to be an orthopedic surgeon. But now I am a full-time politician. And my job is to do what? My job is to go to the greatest panchayat in our country, which happens to be the parliament, and make laws give your voice to the making of laws. What are the laws that are being made or at least that has been made in the last few years? One of them which has caught the attention of the whole world and the whole country is the abrogation of Article 370 which was introduced in Indian Constitution in 1950s. I am not going to delve into all these and tell you what is lawmaking. But a lawmaker is also a special carrier. The politician becomes the lawmaker in various levels. At Delhi, it is the member of parliament. At the state capital, it is the member of the legislative assembly. At the district headquarters, it is the Jela Parishans and the Gau Panchayat presidents. All of them are equally important at, at certain level. Friends, if I have come here to stand and talk to you on career building, I come here with most humility to talk to you about my two pence of experience that I have. What have I done and what qualifies me to talk to you in a forum like this? Friends, I never wanted to be a lawmaker in the first place. I never wanted to be a politician. As has been read out, that my father and my grandfather were lawyers. One was a civil practitioner, another was a criminal practitioner. But they came into public life based on the urgency of the circumstances and the surroundings they came to public life. And they did their work on nation building at their own level, at their own interest, looking into the demands and the situation of the society at that point of time. Today after the demise of my father in 2009, I thought to try under the pressure of public to come to a situation like this where I said, okay, I will do my two pence of activities and what have I done, what is my credibility that I stand here in a platform like this to talk to you. Many of you know that I am a doctor and I ameliorate pain for people who have had fractures or bone related issues. That is my, that is my contribution to nation building because I subside pain by diagnosing the origin of the pain. But other than that, other than that, my little work that was there was that I was, I am managing two hospitals. One hospital happens to be a hospital started by a Britisher way back in 1931 in the center of the town called Shishutori Narishi Kasra in 1931. And for the last 13 or 14 odd, odd years, I have been looking into the management of this hospital and this has been an honorary service. And thankfully there is a team of elderly citizens who are there with me and they are also putting their two pence of efforts to see to it that the poorest of the poor people in our society gets enough medical care for mother and child care. And with a few friends of mine, who has made little money in their life. I have formed a company to start a state of the art tertiary level care center in the form of a 300 bed private sector hospital to give tertiary care, medical care, health care to the people of this valley. 
As far as healthcare is concerned, these are my activities other than, other than doing innumerable health camps for the last 15 to 20 years of my life as a medical student and then as a practitioner. Friends, many of you have heard in the parliament that the government has passed a law called Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019. Now to tell you in brief word is that this is a bill which was passed in Indian parliament so that people of minority communities in three countries surrounding us Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh who are persecuted if they want shelter in our great country we have brought in a law to give them protection under Indian law because when we were trying since 1947 the makers of our nation from Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru to Manmohan Singh Ji, the last uh, Prime Minister till 2014. All of them realized the importance of those people, persecuted people. And they said that we need to give protection to them because they are humiliated, they are persecuted in the nation. The population of the minorities of those state, of those countries have dwindled down from 30% to 8%, from 3% to 0%, from 9% to 1% in all these three states. So what happened in those days that despite our political will, we could not make this law. And in 2012 with a few friends of mine, and under the leadership of Bimolang Shurai Foundation, I filed a PIL in the Supreme Court of India in the month of May 2012. Saying that these persecuted people coming from other these three countries, seeking shelter in our great country needs to be sheltered as far as Indian laws. And if the law in that case is inadequate, we need to change the laws. The Supreme Court, looking into the merit of that case, admitted the case and went on to take multiple hearings between 2012 to 2015. And when there was a change of government in the center, you all of you know, in 2014, for those of you who are interested in political life, you have come to know that with the coming in of a new Prime Minister in the form of Narendra Modi ji, Decision was taken that we will bring in this law. In the 16th parliamentary session, this law was brought but could not be passed because there was no numbers. In the 17th Lok Sabha, which started in 2019, the numbers were in favor of the government. So they brought in this law and I happened to be very lucky and honored to be speaking on that law. And all of you know, that in December 2019, the law got passed and this law is has been given a nod by the President of India. It has gone into form a bill and in the coming days, there will be rules and regulations which will be formed on that particular citizenship amendment bill and the country will see a new, new bill which will be effective. So that is my contribution to nation building as a lawmaker. Friends, as I stand here before you today, you must be thinking that the politician has come, the MP has come to talk, but on, on careers that are important to us. The other day I was speaking, someone asked me, Sir, how can I get a job? My purpose here is to not to tell you how to get a job. My purpose is to tell you which path to take. Our Prime Minister has given us a direction. He has told the new generation of students. The students today comprise almost 35% of our country's population. And they have told you, our Prime Minister has told, you do not become job seeker, become job giver. Which means that after my graduation I cannot go I should not rather go and ask for jobs. Well, if the circumstances are such, you can always go and ask for jobs. 
but always think of building a nation by becoming a job giver. Think of a situation where you can start an enterprise, where you can give employment to five people, and you can bring changes to the life of those five people. Which means, the Prime Minister is telling that you start something which is something like a make in India. You start your enterpri own enterprise, and you build up that enterprise over a period of time, leaps and bounds, and can go into earning money also and taking care of the families which are dependent on you. To my mind, the best profession, the best career is that of a teacher. And there cannot be a second profession, there cannot be a second profession to a teacher. And since the days of Gurukul, since the days, days of Gurus, thousands and thousands of years back, the situation in our in our land was like someone who was born after he used to attain certain age, after a time when he used to be able to take care of himself, he used to be given to a house of a guru, with a guru with he used to stay, with a guru he used to stay right from daybreak to sunset or maybe even after that and learn the lessons of life not just go through the pages of book from cow rearing to cultivation to slokas to astronomy to metallurgy to chemistry to human relationship to everything they used to learn staying with the gurus and during our day during those days also that gurukul system which was there was prevalent almost till the time the Britisher came to India and in 1835 when Lord Macaulay gave us a new law as far as education was concerned and as far as the statistics that is available to us that almost 7,32,000 Gurukuls were present during those days in India from Afghanistan to Burma. The land that you see between Afghanistan to Burma includes Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Burma and of course Sri Lanka. So those was those days in India. So the, that was our that was our education policy, that was our education system. But what Britishers have done to us is that that they have started English as a medium of education and have started making us robot mechanical robots. And they inculcated into our mind, they impregnated our mind that you should become a peon or a class and answer or write notes, take dictation to the British and then you should run those areas with, the whatever, with whatever form of governance that is available. So friends, teaching has been a very noble profession since ages. But over a period of time, it has been diluted and many of the ills which are there in our society has, has basically grasped the teaching profession. And it has not grasped the teaching profession alone. It has grasped all the profession. The politicians have become corrupt. The engineers have become corrupt. The doctors have become corrupt. The teachers have become corrupt. And this system is there in the entire, entire society. So friends, if you think of becoming a doctor, it is a noble profession, it is a good profession. If you think of becoming an engineer, it is also a good profession. I won't say no. This is one of the most important profession which goes into building roads and bridges and buildings in our country. So that is also a very good profession. But one of the most important reasons why I am here today is to tell you that the difference between previous politicians and the modern day politicians. And I, I used to be very, very... After my MS in Dibrugan Medical College, I went on to do my, you know, learning the tricks of the trade in Apollo Hospital Delhi. I was there for almost six years. Then after that, I thought that I will learn because, you know, in India there is a this thing. Until and unless you have a stamp of a Google or from a foreign university, you are not as good as them. So that's what drove me to go to, you know, cross seven seas and go to Scotland to do uh, MCH in uh, orthopedics. 
but then I there I got an opportunity to stay back there, got a job and you know have a uh, this thing life with my nuclear family, drive my Lamborghini or, or Mercedes and stay back there. But I had a calling from inside me yeah, that I have to go back to my homeland and survive. I came back to India in 2008. And then after the demise of my father all of a sudden I started shifting and 2010 I completely shifted to sea. I did this because it was my own calling. And you cannot ask this of anybody because if it is not his calling from inside, you cannot put it, you cannot you know, impregnate his mind. Now second thing is that if you have to do that really, you have to create an environment for him to come back to India so that the situation, whatever working environment he gets in Silicon Valley or maybe any other part of the country, you have to give him that, you know, fail to operate here. So if you can do this, they will come along. A doctor like me who has, who has done his MS and then MCH and then come back to Sinchar and do not find any infrastructure to do my spine surgeries or hip replacement or knee replacement. Why will I come tell me? So in my own way in medical field when I realized that, as I said in a small part of my speech today, that I got a few good friends of mine, got them to make a company. And I know the government will not invest at that point of time. So what I did is this, whatever limited funds I had from my own saving and with the savings of my friends fund, I made a company called uh, Jivan Jyoti Private Limited. And I started a hospital in the form of a Jivan Jyoti Multi-Speciality Hospital in this thing. And I am trying to create an environment. And what it has done in the last seven years is very interesting. Today I have been bombarded with calls from you know all across the country. People are asking me that my son has done uh, this thing cardiology. Uh, is there a job vacancy in your hospital? I said yes, give me his biodata. I am looking for. So today what it has happened in the medical sector in Bharat Valley is that there are many boys and girls from this place who have graduated, who's graduated, and are doing good work in good hospitals across the. Today I have a person from Medanta, boy from Sister, he has done his MC, he comes for 3 to 4 days every month. So things will change, but someone has to identify where the change needs to be made and utilize all his resources to effectively make the change. Your, your thought is very, very, you know, pious. Any, any, I would appreciate, I would appreciate any students asking me. A very good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my question is that if someone thinks that he wants to become a doctor, to become a bureaucrat, what do you want to do? Doctor, doctor, doctor. 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 कि वो एंटरप्रेन्योर बनना चाहती है। एंटरप्रेन्योर बनना चाहती है। बहुत अच्छा। वो अपना बिजनेस करना चाहती है। But she is not getting ample amount of support from her family। She is not getting support। No। So she was she was telling me all of the things to me when she said to her parents she was not getting support। तो वो first thing में ही demotivated हो। Yeah। Yes. So, what will be your take on this? Ki first stage mein kaisa demotivate na ho aur dream ko pasit ho. Ek bohat badiya sawal aapka aur aapne aapne jo aapka dost ka jikr kiya hai, wo dost kya level of education mein hai abhi? She is percent degree. Ha? She is degree degree padhai kar rahi hai. To unko do teen cheez bolna hai, mool. Ek to ye hai ki Bharat ki sarkar aaj ki din mein kafi saare loan de rahi hai. जो लोन लेके यू कैन स्टार्ट आपका कोई भी व्यवसाय और आपका कोई भी प्रोजेक्ट आप स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं एक तो ये है पहला अगर आपको कोई दिक्कत होता है पर्सनल लेवल में माय ऑफिस इज देयर इन बिलबाग विच इज माय रेसिडेंट ग्राउंड फ्लोर आप अगर मैं रहता भी नहीं तो आप मेरे ऑफिस के साथ कांटेक्ट कीजिए मैं आपको कौन सा बैंक से कितना रुपया क्या बिजनेस सब करके देने के लिए तैयार हूँ नंबर वन नंबर टू एक गवर्नमेंट का स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का एक एजेंसी है यहाँ पे इसको कहता है डीआईसी डीआईसी में जाके डीआईसी की ऑफिसर है आप एक प्रोजेक्ट बना के उनको देने से वो आपका प्रोजेक्ट को एकदम पूरा पूरा उसको देखेगा उसमें कोई एडजस्टमेंट और प्लानिंग चेंज करना है फाइनेंशियल जो बैलेंस शीट होता है उसको चेक करना है वो करके 
उसको पास करेंगे फॉर अप्रूवल फ्रॉम गुवाहाटी जो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट है उससे आपको पैसा मिलेगा आप कुछ भी स्टार्ट कर सकते तीसरा अगर है अगर पढ़ाई करके करना चाहते हैं तो मैंने कुछ दिन पहले पीयूष गोयल हमारे कॉमर्स मिनिस्टर हैं उनका साथ बात करके एक शिक्षक की जो हमारे असम यूनिवर्सिटी है वहाँ पे इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फॉरेन ट्रेड का एक यूनिट हम खोलने जा रहे हैं और उस यूनियन इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फॉरेन ट्रेड में बीस लड़का लोगों लड़की लोगों को पहला साल से लिया जाए इनको तीन महीना या छह महीना का क्रैश कोर्स का कोचिंग होगा कि फॉरेन ट्रेड करने के लिए आपको क्या क्या कागजात की जरूरत है कितना पैसा की जरूरत है कौन सा ऑफिस में जाके क्या परमिशन लेना चाहिए वो सारा चीज असम यूनिवर्सिटी में आने वाले दिन में सिखाया जाएगा आपका दोस्त को बोलिए ये तीन उपाय मैंने बोल के दिया इसका ऊपर भी और कुछ चाहिए तो पर्सनली हमसे मिले हम उसको बोल के देंगे क्या करना है क्या करना नहीं है डिपेंडिंग ऑन डिपेंडिंग ऑन दिक्वायरमेंट एंड दोशन तीसरा एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट लास्ट सॉरी फोर्थ एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट आपका दोस्त को बोलिए कि आपका दोस्त जाके उनका पिताजी और माताजी से बात करें और बोले कि डॉक्टर राजदीप एम पी और सिंचर ने उनको रिक्वेस्ट किया है कि बेटी को डीमोटिवेट ना करें आपका दोस्त का फ्यूचर कहाँ है वो आपको भी पता नहीं है आपका दोस्त को भी पता नहीं है और ना ही आपका दोस्त का माता और पिता को Good afternoon, sir. Sir, actually my aim in life is to become an IPS officer. You want to become an IPS officer? Yes, sir. Very good. So I am still uh, studying at home and preparing for this also. And I uh, actually my father is telling that first go for uh, MA, complete your MA, and then go for coaching and do the exam. But I know that UPSC requires only graduate person. To seek for the uh, exam is required. So should I uh, seek for the exam after my graduation or go for the master? You have asked a very good question. First thing is that look, as far as I know, graduation is the prerequisite for sitting for your for your civil service exam. And you need not be a postgraduate to come and sit for the exam. You need look in politics. I should not. Even if I am MBBS, whatever I can do in politics with an MCH degree, also I do the same. If you have to become an IAS or an IPS or an IFS officer, your first requirement would be to clear your graduation, and then it is not guaranteed that the first time you sit for the exam, you will get it. Your your this thing course is on the offer and online, you will get it. There are thousands and thousands of boys trying for innumerable years of their life. And despite that trial, they are not being able to qualify. Maybe step one they clear, step two they clear, step three they get stuck up. And I know friends who have got stuck up for seven times, eight times, nine times in the life. So you tell your parents that trial should start immediately. And you have a limited this thing. I think it is five attempts in your life, entire life you can make five attempts. So best would be immediately after your graduation. That is my. I will come to the best advice. My advice is immediately after uh, graduation, take one year total mentally and sit for the final because that is the time between your 22 to 28. You are your mind is the sharpest, and you make those multiple you know attempts during those years. And if you can crack it well and good, if you do not, if you think that uh, there are other options also, there is a scorer academy here. You can go and talk to the mentor, uh, and then he can guide you. Uh, this is absolutely free of cost. You can start taking education and process. But mind you, there is no for all of you. Be it your higher secondary results or graduation results or post graduation results, there is no shortcut to success in academics. Please, friends, drill it into your head that I will only study two three pages and you know give make by heart those questions which has come in the previous years. And I will, you know, answer those. It is not possible, not possible. And mind it. One last thing on a on a uh, on a humorous note. You look to be overfit, and you need to cut it down on the excess.
speak. Uh, there was a question. Am I audible? Yeah. So there was a question which was posted by you, sir, regarding the adverse effects of I think cigarettes, good car and liquor, etc. Right. So I don't think anybody here knows more about the adverse effect than our MP sir who is here. I just want to add one or two points here. Whenever we talk about these things, everything has been already covered. Whenever we talk about these things, there is a concept called behavioral change. Have you heard about the term behavioral change? Laws cannot do everything. Laws can only complement. You know, doctor, engineers and teacher used to be the profession. I am starting general line, I will study physics or I will study uh, English and I will become a teacher and I will apply for a job in colleges and universities. YouTuber, social influencer, things have changed. And in the entire world, the number of profession, the area of profession that has come in front of our eyes are something interesting. The other day I was discussing this with my daughter, older daughter. She, she has just given her class 10 finals. She is asking me that, how about having criminal psychology as a career? I said, I have never heard of criminal psychology. I have heard of psychology. Psychology has branches that I know. Industrial psychology, this psychology, that psychology. Criminal psychology, I did not know. She is only a 15 year old girl. She has opened my eyes to many things in the world. Then I went on to make inquiries where this profession exists. And there can be many things. But despite saying all this, I am trying to draw your attention to nation building. And one of the other ways of doing nation building is to become a bureaucrat. Probably today, after politician, the next best profession who can change policy making in the entire country are the bureaucrats. How do you become a bureaucrat? To become a bureaucrat, you have to give your civil service examination. Be it the central civil service examination or be it the state civil service examination. You have to finish your graduation and then go into taking, you know, tuitions or go into uh, tying up with a mentor institute and become a bureaucrat. Basically sit for the exam. The exams are not very easy to crack. And it takes a lot of preparation. So I am here to tell you that I never had that interest so I did not become a bureaucrat because since my childhood days, since my days in, in school, the school that I studied, one day I thought I will become a lawyer. Because my father was a lawyer, I used to see all the criminals coming to his chamber. So I thought I will become a lawyer. And one fine day when I realized that, I took hold of the books the constitution of India and I flipped through the pages of the constitution of India when I was in class 8. And that was the first and probably the last day that I have flipped through the pages of constitution because I gave up the hope of becoming a, by evening time I gave up the hope of becoming a lawyer in my life. Then my attention became the thing that I want to become a Ranjit Trophy player and represent Assam in Ranjit Trophy. That was my goal in life at one point of time. And it persisted for many days. And my friend, few of my friends sitting here can recall that I used to, you know, even in sleep I used to emulate how Sunil Gavaskar makes his forward defense, you know. And uh, somehow down the line that also evaporated. I went into medical college. So similarly, many of you will have flipping thoughts with many professions in, 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 uh, in your life. Some of you may want to become a general, uh, this thing, and become a teacher, and study in general line and become a teacher. Some of you want to become, you know, carry on with your family business. I'm not saying this, any of these are bad, or any of these do not go into nation building. Wealth creation always goes into nation building. You create wealth, you are contributing to nation building, mind it. Don't get me wrong. If you are creating wealth, if you are creating a business, if you are generating moolah, if you are generating money, you are contributing to nation building, that should be the first priority. And you should see to it that you should contribute as a good citizen. By paying taxes, by being honest, by being sincere. Modern day, the catch word is, you have to be environment friendly, you have to do certain things which are environment friendly, you cannot do anything like use the single use plastic,
burn the tires in public life. So that should not be done. But what should be done is that, to my mind, you should always balance those. And of course, as I stand here today, I want to invite you, all of you, to study at least or think at least of pursuing a career of a bureaucrat. Sit for your civil service exams, these are three stages exam. You study for your graduation, you do your BS, the BSCs and the BCOMs. And these days the new NEP policy which is there, previously the policies were 10 plus 2, 10th exam was a benchmark, 12th exam was another benchmark, and then after that you go into college and study. The new NEP policy which has come, which will be 8 years plus 5 years. At 8, you will go into high school and after 5 years you will come out of class 12 and you can pursue any, any subjects. And the subjects, you know, jugglery has also changed during our times. When it was science, like you could study only physics, mathematics, biology, chemistry, these are the subjects. In English you could study literature and few subjects. There could be one or two mixing of subjects between arts and commerce. But nowadays the things have completely changed. In college when you pass out 12, you can study a lot of things. Someone who is good in playing music, any musical instrument, can also study mathematics. That is the versatility of the new NEP policy which is coming for you. So, another important thing is there, that you want to drop a year. That you are doing your graduation or post graduation all of a sudden you see that there are certain emergency needs that your family wants you to attend and for that purpose you need to take a single year break. You can do that and come back and join the course at that particular level where you had actually left it. So the versatility of the course will also increase. So my purpose of saying this is that in spite of doing all this, by trying to give Sit for this exam of civil services, there are three stages. You need to get in with a mentor who can give you guidance. There is a baseline, the basic exam, the prelim exam. If you qualify the subject, you go into the mains. If you qualify there, you go into the interview level. So there are basically three stages. And this is an evolving system. In 2012, probably, the civil service examination of our country, primarily the UPSC exam, has changed. I am here standing before you to invite you to please try your luck to become a bureaucrat. Try to become or at least sit for this exam and see where you stand. And you know there was a trend in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Today we see a lot of bureaucrats in Delhi if you go, lot of bureaucrats coming from Bihar. Because the people from Bihar, the students from Bihar actually got into this mindset, whatever we study, at least once in our life, we will sit for the civil service examination. They crack those exams and today most of the bureaucrats are from Bihar NEP. The trend is changing now, people from Odisha are also becoming, people from South are also becoming bureaucrats. Because they are sacrificing everything and they are focused. Despite the career, this thing that they are doing, they are doing the BA, BSCs and become, but they are sitting for the bureaucratic exam, these entrance level exams, and then trying to become a bureaucrat. I would like to invite you also to become a politician, not just don't think that you can always become like me. I was lucky. I was lucky because my, my family was in public life. I was rather, rather pushed into this. There is an old story, you know, the person who did not know swimming, was all of a sudden pushed from the backside, and he somehow managed to save himself. Then got up, everybody started clapping, and then he turned back and said, who pushed me from behind? So my situation is slightly like this. So friends, you can also start. If you think that you can contribute to nation building, you can start from panchayat level, you can start from, you can start from uh, legislative level. And based on your work, it, it is not mandatory that you have to align yourself with a national party. It is not mandatory. You can become an independent, you can try your luck in panchayat or legislative, this thing. And I can assure you the changing India. These days India is running on meritocracy. Because students like you who are there are intensely possessive about your capabilities. You know that if you can try, you can achieve something. 
if, if you can achieve something, you can go there. And this meritocratic India, this aspirational India does not give space for someone who has not achieved anything in his life. If, a, if today Modi is married, suppose, argument say, and Modi ji sends his son or daughter to become the Prime Minister of India, will you students accept it? No. So that person needs to earn his accolades, needs to earn from what he has achieved in his personal and professional life and then go on to do something or rightfully claim that I want to become like this. So you need to see, look into all this and you can contribute, you can contribute to becoming, you can contribute to a nation building by becoming a politician, by becoming a lawmaker, by becoming a bureaucrat and of course becoming a battery of profession is open to you from being a teacher to a doctor to engineers to youtubers and social influencers so there is a battery of profession but most importantly you should know that you learn to create wealth for the nation if you can create wealth for the nation you are also a nation builder so i would like to uh, end my uh, talk here today at the prestigious Guru Charan College. It has indeed been an honor for me to be, to be uh, speaking to all the students who I think are very close to me and I try to learn from you with each and every passing day. I will take all questions. If you are ready to ask me anything, I will be ready to answer you from here. If the organizers can give a cordless microphone to them, Please volunteer. Please raise your hand. Anyone, anything, anything under the sky. Any questions under the sky if you'd like to ask. Sir, my question is, what is the challenge to nation building? What is the? What is the challenge to nation building? What is the challenge to nation building? Well, there has been a lot of challenges in nation building. The first of all, the concept of nation building is very new. Though it was there amongst maybe the politicians and the bureaucrats in the immediate pre-independence era, the term nation building was not widely percolated into the students. Today, I don't know whether any politician has spoken to you or any politician all across the country has spoken uh, to any college students like this. But for me, I have always been trying for the last few years, though the, because of COVID and other situations, we could not physically meet with each other. But I have been trying and thinking of this program for the last two and a half, three years. The immediate challenge of nation building is in the mindset. You need to break that barrier inside your head that you are personally capable. Each 135 crore individual of our country is capable of building a nation. Be it in whatever form. As I have said, be it your uh, job, be it wealth creation, be it your social service, be, be it going to the villages and even, you know, uh, uh, encouraging people on the Sachwata Abhiyan uh, is also nation building. You go to the you go to the periphery, you go to the you go to the peripheral area markets and tell the vendors there, tell the shopkeepers there, do not use single plastic. Do not use single plastic and how to dispose of single use plastic, that also if you can teach, that is also a part of nation building. We want to create a plastic free world. If you can contribute there, there is nothing like it. Next. Good morning, sir. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Nilendu Thor from the Department of Zoology, EC College. And it's a pleasant occasion 
to hear from you uh, for such a nice deliberation. So my question is a little bit uh, related to the society as a society relates to national building. My question is uh, when I walk down the uh, different street, street corners and observing the pan vendors and the wine shoppers. These uh, pan shops. Pan shops. And, yeah. And also the wine sellers. My question relates to that. Relates to that. Students, please, please, please remain in the hall. Our representative is delivering the lecture. Please remain in the hall. So, that there lies a sense of a question arises in the mind when we go to the class and teach the students about them. They used to ask me if there is a statutory warning that cigarette smoking is injurious to health. And also, wine, uh, intake of wine or liquor is injurious to health. There lies the question why our uh, system is allowing such shops to open. So there, there we, we have started certain campaign in my class also I used to that at least you, have, you can stop one person not to uh, take wine or cigarette. So in this way we are trying to... Uh, I get the sense of your question. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, how to bring in laws so that, so that uh, pan shops or pan shops selling cigarettes yeah. and and uh, liquor. Yeah, liquor. Pan, generally, pan shops don't sell liquor, but liquor stores sell liquor. No? Yeah, liquor I shops. get the sense of your question. I'm like, I, I'll answer you as far as the best of my knowledge. Okay, sir. My, my, I'm taking. Uh, yet not completed my question. My question is that we are trying our level best to the young minds to percolate to the young minds that that. At least you can stop one person in ta taking cigarettes, or at least you can stop one person from taking liquor, and then we can contribute to the national building. So that is my point, and I want our representative here so have certain policies which the government can take so that this can be minimized. I understand. Look, uh, as far as uh, pan and cigarette is concerned. Uh, pan and cigarette is concerned, I am an absolute no-no to it. And for four decades of my life, till the time I passed medical college and, and I went on to do postgraduate outside, you know, I was a free total of my life and I never encouraged drinking. But now socially, once in a while, uh, I do not say no. Just for the sake of it, I hold a glass and move around once in a while. That is my personal. But when I always have tried to give a, uh, give a message to the society that something which is injurious should not be consumed. Anything, like I am a doctor, I know the drugs that I prescribe to a patient to ameliorate his pain, be it uh, diglofenac sodium or any other of its derivatives. Anything which is bad, anything which is consumed more than excess is always bad. It either harms your kidney, or it does a GI perforation, the painkillers. Similarly, medically, if you think wine, wine which is calibrated and is taken to a certain level, almost on a on a regular basis, can be taken without any physical harm. But if you take excess wine, drink excess alcohol, then obviously your liver gets damaged. I will give you a a, a medical report. Drinking. Two pegs of alcohol for five days in a week for 20 years lead to liver cirrhosis. That is a medical proven medical record. Smoking 20 cigarettes in a day for 15 years of your life will lead to lung cancer. That is also been proven. It has been medically proven. Now, my advice as a doctor or as a lawmaker is that if you want to have a bad habit, first thing is please do not cultivate those bad habits. Please do not smoke, please do not drink, please do not take pan. If you go to Northern India, I must tell you with pride, in Northern India you do hardly find any pan shops. The number of cigarette smokers in our country has dwindled like anything since the government has
been using this sticker of oral and joke cancer in the cigarette packets i think you are aware of so my my message to the to the students community is please do not smoke because it is medically bad please do not take betel nut with with chewing that the line that is there is radioactive especially the radioactive uh, the line that comes from uh, meghalaya and the radioactive substance once it touches the inner buccal mucosa of yours will lead to you know giving radiation for almost 20 years of your life which can lead to oral cavity cancers and please do not drink because excess of it will lead to physical impairment so my message is clear and from my side that's what i can so I, I don't know whether it answers your question or not but then well uh, if you are insisting that the last part of my answer if you are insisting that the government will stop the cigarette companies the government at this stage will not do so because it is also creating wealth and it is also generating funds to you know run uh, innumerable families lakhs and lakhs of families in let us let us put it on because this is a very vital thing that's why one more point Actually, if things start very casually, the casual approach, occasional days, students start, and then it becomes habitual. So that that is my point that it should not be started case casually, then, so that it becomes habitual. Okay, thank you, sir. Students. Uh, Namo Namaha sir and uh, very good afternoon to you. Take the mic away from your mouth. It's alright sir. Is it alright? Yes. So, it was a wonderful session sir. You opened our minds to a lot of perspectives other than what we know or what other than what we think of when the concept of nation building arises in our mind or in the public discourse. Uh, there are a lot of questions which I have, but I would like to limit myself into one or two. The first question uh, would be regarding ideology, sir. Uh, when we think of a nation, most of us, we don't uh, Take the civilizational aspect into concern. As you mentioned, CAA. CAA is a civilizational commitment of the state of India towards its people who have been a part of our civilization from thousands of years. But in the, long, uh, in the public discourse, the act has taken a communal turn. And what it has resulted in is it has sort of uh, created a discourse and it has also created an uh, opinion that the state is uh, sort of pushing a particular religion forward which is not the case. But uh, it has been that unfortunately and a lot of other issues are also there and when we think of a nation we just think it in terms of... What, a, what is your question? Uh, actually sir, uh, I wanted to put a perspective before asking the question. So, my question is, sir, that most of the people who choose to take up a career, when they think of a nation, they just take it as a piece of land. Now, how can we love our nation? Because we have uh, a civilizational history, a history of civilizational greatness, of which most of us are not aware of. And that is the reason we don't wish to actively work for the country. So how can, uh, how can we create a discourse which would motivate us to work for the country? And after your reply, I would also like to put another question. Thank no, you. you put your question first. Okay, okay sir. Then, then my, then keep, my your, keep your question to the point. Okay, okay. These days, you generally don't ask three mark or five mark questions. These uh -huh. days, you generally ask one mark objective question. Yes or no should be done. Okay. So, sir, my second question is, the, as you said, regarding bureaucrats. And as we know that the politicians and the lawmakers are the, they make the laws. But 
it is the duty of the bureaucrats to implement it. Now, uh, we have seen in our country that uh, if we uh, suppose, let us take an arbitrary example, the Ministry of uh, Communication. Now, the Secretary of the Ministry of Communication might not be from an engineering background, he might be from a political science background. And there is a lack of lateral entry and there is also a lack of accountability in the bureaucracy of the country because uh, there is no mark given to a bureaucrat and nobody, nobody except the president of the country can uh, do, uh, can come in way of the job of an IS officer. If each and every job has uh, certain rules to be followed or uh, uh, is graded, why not the bureaucrats and why and uh, there should be lateral entry also, there should be professionals coming in the system to help with policy making. Thank you sir. Look, to answer your uh, first question, the idea of nation and the perspective that you gave of CA and you consider, India is, is a nation not just from 1947, that is what the first understanding that you should have. We have been actually bombarded with, with information that it is the British which created India. That is the first misnomer that people in India should understand. Because it is the British which has actually broken down the system that has been existing in our country. As I have said, 7,32,000 Gurukuls existed between Afghanistan to Burma. And now we are having, you know, schools and colleges in the English system which are basically producing mechanical robots. We are going on to become clerks and peons. That is the problem with us. Now you have to understand this land on the southern side of the Himalayas and on the northern side of, of Indian Ocean is actually a piece of land which was called Hindu, Zindas, whatever you call it. There has been a civilization which has been existing. Otherwise, you won't be having a person born in Guwahati and his name is Bhuvaneshwar or Chonna. And or you cannot be having a person who has been born in Kashmir or Pakistan and his name is Mahabaleshwar. That cannot exist. Because you would have been confined to our place and our... Now there is a person who has been born in Kerala, his name is Kamaika. How is that possible? Because we were a nation since ages. We have, we have refused to believe it because the British have came and told us you are a land of you know, black magic and snake charms. Did not they say that? They said that. And we were believing that. We became so, you know, developing a complex of inferiority amongst us by seeing that uh, white state that we are non-performers. We do not know, we have not gone to, you know, we have not studied anything. Just imagine when 10,000 years back, when cultivation was developed in this piece of land that I am talking about in India, people in Europe were actually living in cages. cages. When 10,000 years back, when, when the principles of, of farming, growing crops were being developed in this land, people in Europe lived in caves. When in 1632 Galileo said that it is, it is the earth which moves around the sun and not the sun which was conventionally believed in Europe that it was the sun which goes around the earth. Galileo was taken from his house, put in Leaning Tower of Pisa and he was jailed there and he was asked to drink poison and die. Thousands of years back, the Munis and the Rishis in our country believe that there were nine grohos and that's why the concept of no, novo groho is there in our bed and Upanishads. So the nine planets were there in the Indian Munis and Rishis thousands of years back and they also celebrated Kumbha every 12 years because they knew that it is the Saturn which revolves around, uh, uh, Jupiter which revolves around the, revolves around the sun every 12 years once so the Kumbha Mela is to come every 12 years. So you come to a land you occupy us militarily, grasp over us, and then you tell us that we are a land of snake charmers, and, and we, are a we are a land of snake charmers and black magic. So this is not right. Though the idea of nation or nationhood existed in our country for, from long since, it is not 1947 that Britishers have given us a nation colony. 
not that. Do not live in that fool's world. It is for your generation to go out and tell the world we are a nation since ages. Number one. Number two, you said about lateral entry and all. You must be aware of the fact that today in the Modi ministry, today in Modi ji's ministry, there are innumerable ministers who are ministers through Rajya Sabha and they have been made lateral entry. The railway minister in our country, Ashwini Vaishnav, is an IIM graduate and an, and an IAS. And he was in, working in a multinational company in, in uh, America. He was, he was in public life and then all of a sudden he is. Our external affairs minister, Mr. Jai Shankar, was the chief external, uh, external affairs secretary to Sushmati. Today he is the minister himself. Rakesh Kumar is there in power sector minister, is a bureaucrat. So there is a life for bureaucrat. What I am telling you is that try and become a bureaucrat. If you are not trying to become a politician, please try and become a bureaucrat. Because it has been my dream to see more bureaucrats from my schools and my colleges and my hometown. And I wish to find them in the offices of Gowati, uh, uh, Dispur and Delhi. That is the reason why I am here. You have understood the, this thing in my tune in my speech. And I am to that personal this thing, I am trying to bring an institute, I brought in a mentor who is here in the house today, that I have established a scorer academic in Silchar, so that people who are seeking help how to become a bureaucrat, please go there, talk to the mentor, see how you can take the exams and then you can become a bureaucrat. But lateral entry in politics is difficult. Anything else? myself, uh, Rajasri uh, It is not a question, but I will just express my feelings uh, for your, that, is, that was a wonderful deliberation how you have connected Kenya with the nation belief. The thing is that from the very ancient time, that connection of Kenya and nation building was there when the society was divided into four classes, Brahman, Shastriya, Vaishya and Shudra. The Brahmins were to look after the, they were after the spiritual expedition and the Shatri used to look after the protection of the country and Vaishya used to look after the prosperity of the country and the Shudra, they were the level plus, they were also uh, looking after the country. In a way, all of them were uh, contributing to the nation. The main purpose of four classes was the nation building. So whatever they were doing, they were doing for the building of the nation only with a sense of sacrifice. Now, uh, thanks to the present government for bringing these old ideas in new form in the present situation. So that same, uh, say these ideas will be there in our country. Now, we will find that since you were a part of the policy agenda, now we will find that in our country, the super brilliant students after taking degree from the country, they are going abroad and they are contributing there. We feel proud. Apart from people, bureaucrats and who are trying to be a politician, there are people who are just job seekers to economically support them. So what are the opportunities we see in coming years? In our state, like probably MNCs or corporate, so, what are the opportunities we see for job seekers in our state? Opportunities for job seekers. Something which I am not trying to advocate, but then I will answer your question. Look, if you want to become a job seeker at the end of your study career, if you think that I need to do a job, I have family compulsions and I have to take care of you know, my family. There are many ways. Assam government, in our vicinity, as you have said, Assam government is planning to give 1 lakh jobs to people who will be graduates or as per their qualification in all departments from education department to police department to PWD department, uh, you know, all the departments. But what Assam government is fundamentally doing, which has not been done by previous government, is that we are trying to categorize, make a slab of jobs. Like for 12 pass, this is the job, for graduation, this is the job, for post graduation, this is the job, and that is the salary scheme. So, we are making those uh, final touch ups, and you will see those jobs will be advertised through uh, newspapers in all the state newspapers and the local newspapers. 
the English, the vernaculars and all the other. And you have to answer those, fill those. But the problem there is that no politician today will help you to, to get a job. Because if the politician recommends a job for you, today will lead to cancellation of this thing because whatever our Prime Minister has said, I will tell you a very interesting story of our Prime Minister's own family life. You know the Prime Minister has few brothers and the daughter of one of his brother came to his Prime Minister's office one day. Seeing an advertisement which came out in Gujarat local daily, that there are 20 jobs for certain this thing, 20 posts. So she came to Prime Minister asking for favour from the Prime Minister that if you tell the Chief Minister of Gujarat, he will give a job to me. For first three days, she could not meet the Prime Minister who happens to be her own uncle. And then on knowing that she has come and all, he said, you meet me on such and such day in my breakfast table. So what happened is that the breakfast table, she told him, I need a favour. He said, I have only one way of helping you. That is, you should come within the first 20 of that list and all, merit list and I will get, help you get a job. So that is the story today about. <clears throat> he did not give her the job, he told her. <coughs> he told her that if you come within the first 20, then you will get a job. So similarly in this case, as I have told you, today's India runs on meritocracy. It does not run on titles at all or fifth of them. If my son or my daughter will come and ask that I want to become the MP of Sincher, the people who will sincere will kick him or her out. This is not practically possible. So you have to understand, you have to work your way. If you have the merit, you will get the job. If you don't have the merit, you will have to wait for your next job. Next. Last question. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, my question is, you insisted the students to try for bureaucracy. Yes. But it's a known fact that the selection... It is not, it is not an insistence, it is my suggestion. Yes. Okay. So, but it is also known fact that the selection rate is very low. In fact, uh, we know that many uh, brilliant aspirants miss the mark by a chain. So, what can be done to inculcate more uh, efficient bureaucrats in the system? Look, the bureaucrats are efficient. If you if you try to insinuate that the bureaucrats are not efficient, then I will not agree with you. It is the same set of bureaucrats which existed during the time of uh, UPA policy paralysis four years which went on between 2011 to 2014. The same bureaucrats were not changed by Mr. Modi after he came to power in 2014. And same thing happened. I'm not. I'm not personalizing. I'm not making any acquisition towards it. But to tell to you know suggest that the bureaucrats are not efficient is not right. Number one. Number two is the bureaucrats performs to the masters. You know you are sitting in a position of constitutional authority. You are the prime minister or the president. Your bureaucrat is there who is an IPS or an IAS or an IFS officer or any any other for them. You order that person to do this. At best, he or she will advise you that these are the rules and regulations of this system and they will make a survey platter to you. Option A, Option B, Option C. So you have to choose the, the person who is in constitutional position or the politician or the head of a government needs to choose between all these. So these are, these are the way you need to uh, see, look at things. The other angle that you are this thing is, look, UPSC conducts exam and innumerable students appear and you cannot say that how many students can appear for 5, 6, maybe 100 will appear for 1000, 6, maybe 6, six lakhs will appear so you cannot, you have to bid the competition in the market to make an entry so that has to be there you cannot say that seats are so limited so I should not try look at the boy who who was killed in that bombing in Ukraine, that guy from uh, Bangalore, his class 12 marks were 97.4%. He did not get a medical seat, he went to Ukraine to study medical science. You know. Just imagine, he was not a back student. If he comes back, 
if you would have if you would have come back and said no i want to become a bureaucrat would you have would you have said no to him the ips officer in silchar is a medical doctor she did her medical college and then sent for the exam she got into that so there were innumerable doctors innumerable engineers innumerable iim graduates innumerable general graduates who are going who are going into become bureaucrat so you cannot you know cut paste and all i will do this 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 your your life will not be that arithmetic and mind it please do not be afraid of failures you look at me some people may think that at the age of 50 rajdeep has achieved this this but i have i have encountered lot of failures in my life lot of blockages blockages in my life and i have tried to circumvent my way to those blockages and thanks to the my family and my friends who stood rock solid behind me so you need to you need to create that ecosystem around you and you have to work with sincerity if the sincerity is not there in you then your parents will never support you your friends will never your wife or your husband or your children will never support you this question of this girl asking a friend and her parents if she can convince her parents with her efforts and her sincerity i am sure that girl's parents will support her in any endeavor she takes not just uh, entrepreneurs thank you friends অনেক সময় ধরে আমরা মূল্যবান বক্তব্য শুনলাম আমাদের মাননীয় সাংসদ ডক্টর রাজদীপ রায় মহাশয়ের কাছ থেকে তো এখন আমরা একদম শেষ পর্যায়ে তো উনি ব্যুরোক্রেটস ফরেন সার্ভিস এন্টারপ্রিনার্স কিভাবে হওয়া যায় সে সম্বন্ধে বললেন তোমরা শুনলে ছাত্রদের উদ্দেশ্য করেই আমি বলছি তো আমাদের কলেজে আমরা জয়েন্টলি স্কোরা যে ইনস্টিটিউশনটা আছে যেটা ইয়াং বাডিং টেলেন্টসদেরকে নার্চার করছে তো সেখানে আমারও বহু দিনের ইচ্ছা ছিল যে আমাদের কলেজ থেকে বা আমাদের গোড়াপেলি থেকে এই ধরনের কিছু ব্রোকেস আসুক প্রডিউস হোক কিন্তু ততটুকু সাপোর্ট এবং গাইডেন্স আমাদের কাছে ছিল না কিন্তু এখন আমাদের কাছে সেই সুযোগটুকু এসছে সব ছাত্রদেরকে নিয়ে আমরা আবার বসব স্কোরারের যে গাইড দিচ্ছেন উনিও আমাদের এখানে আছেন তো আমরা জয়েন্টলি এই ব্যাপারে আমরা তোমাদেরকে সাপোর্ট করব তোমরা আমাদের ক্লিয়ার গাইডেন্সের সাথে যোগাযোগ করবে এবং তোমরা খবর নেবে এবং যাদের এই ব্যাপারে ইচ্ছুক তোমরা যোগাযোগ করতে পারো আর লাস্ট যেটা মাননীয় সাংসদ বললেন যে প্রবলেম অনেক উনি ফেস করেছেন তারপর ওই জায়গায় এসছেন এটা স্বামী বিবেকানন্দ সেই কথা বলছেন যে যদি তুমি চলতে চলতে কোনো বাধার সম্মুখীন না হও তাহলে বুঝতে হবে তুমি ভুল পথে চলছো তার মানে প্রবলেম ট্রাবল সেগুলো থাকবে সেগুলো নিয়েই আমাদের চলতে হবে এবং যারা এই ট্রাবলস নিয়ে এটাকে ক্রস করে আগে বাড়িয়ে যায় সেই জীবনে সাফল্য অর্জন করতে পারে তো আমি এখানে আরও একবার আমার আমাদের মাননীয় সংসদকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ দিচ্ছি যে ওনার মূল্যবান বক্তব্য ওনার এক্সপিরিয়েন্স আমাদের সাথে শেয়ার করার জন্য থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ প্রিন্সিপাল স্যার অ্যান্ড আই থিঙ্ক ডক্টর রাজদীপ রয় অনারেবল এমপি হ্যাজ given a wonderful wonderful inspirational speech i believe he deserved a much bigger applause dear students and remember he was a student like you in gc college so he is a living inspiration for us all now uh, here is a small uh, announcement that uh, mentors from scorer academy are uh, sitting amongst us after the program is over at any point of time any student want to interact please feel free to come forward now i would request dr gopal sinha madam to kindly come and give the vote of thanks
respected member of parliament, Dr. Rajdeep Prat, respected principal, Dr. Bihar Seth, respected members of the foundation, my dear friends from the press, my dear colleagues and dear students. Now it is the time to offer the customary vote of thanks. So at the very outset, I take this opportunity to offer my thanks to Dr. Rajdeep Prat for having chosen such a wonderful topic for deliberation and interaction with our students. His deliberation has enlightened us all. Thank you, sir. Now I take this opportunity to offer my thanks to our principal for collaborating with this foundation. For Thank you, sir. I also take this opportunity to offer my thanks to the members of the foundation for making us a part of this collaboration. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to take offer my thanks to members of the press for covering this incident, sorry, event. I now offer my thanks to the colleagues of our, our members of our college for gracing this occasion. Thank you, sirs and madam. Last but not the least, you are my dear students. Without you, this event would not have been possible. So my heartfelt thanks goes to you for being here, for interacting with our IT. Thank you so much. With this, I would like to take your leave. Thank you.